Well, here's another old Gibson L7. This one's from 1937, and we just got it into the shop for some repairs and thought it'd be nice to just show it off a little bit. Um, it is a beautiful guitar. It has been refinished. The, the current owner of it told me he had a receipt in the case it was refinished sometime in the 90s, but they did a great job with the sunburst. Jeff was pointing out the nice narrow, um, dark edge to it, so you have a lot of yellow in the center. Um, I'm sure the pick guard has been replaced. There's no way the original pick guard would be in that condition after all these years. It, of course, has the picture frame inlays in the fretboard. I know they only used these for about two years on the L7. Um, then they started putting them on the L12 instead, and the L7, I think they went to dots maybe, or could have been blocks. I can't remember that, but anyway, in 37 and Part of 38, they did the picture frame inlays. Somebody told me once it was because Gibson actually subcontracted this kind of work. And so wherever they were contracting with would do the inlays in these tiles. And then Gibson would just have to cut out a square and stick them in. I don't know if that's true or not, but I love that look. Um... The, the original finish on L7's, the back and sides were almost black on all of the ones that I've seen. This one, when it was refinished, they didn't make the, uh, the back quite as dark as it would have been originally. And I think that's really nice because look at the bird's eye on that. I hope it shows up in the video, but it's just gorgeous. Usually I, I've seen these with kind of a plainish curly maple, but this is really cool. So nice that when they refinished it they didn't make it uh, invisible. Um, so the big reason that it's here is because Right in this area, the back and side are separating. So we're going to glue that back together and then touch up the finish. Um, beyond that, uh, the owner just wants a, a basic setup, level and dress the frets, do a setup, and then it will be all done. So. Not one of the most complicated repairs we've done, but we can definitely get this little separation put back together and uh, take it away. We used a scrap of mahogany and made a clamping call that matches the curvature of the back. And obviously padded it because we don't want to mar the finish. And we've got... Uh, we made tape marks to show us right where to position this call and we will clamp it down with this long bar clamp and we found that we could pull the side into perfect alignment with the back just with this setup. So, so once we get the glue in there we'll pull the side in with this and then we'll use a couple of other clamps to squeeze the back down onto the side. So Jeff is working some woodworker glue tight bond into the gap and uh, it seems to be flowing pretty nicely. Okay. Voila.
pump it a little bit here. Yep. Uh, yeah. And should we look with the scope? Sure. We've tried using suction cups and other methods, but pumping seems to be as good or better than any other approach. Yeah, when it's a loose joint like that, yep. I mean, it can be hard to pump yep. glue with a crack if it's right. not uh, separated. But Yep, that's glue right there, buddy. Okay. When you say? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that seems to be about the right yeah, place for right, it. Yeah, right, yeah. And that's right at the top of the curving. Right. Which is where I'd expect it. Okay, good. Okay. So now that we know there's some glue in there all the way through, we applied one more bead of it and... Uh, now we're ready to clean up and clamp. Yeah, I'm actually getting all the way to the heel now. Great. Right, which is what I was hoping for. Yeah. I'm glad we did this marking before we filled it with glue. Yep. Crack is exposed. Yeah, so we can see. Ah, yes. Look at that. Yep, you already have some squeeze out going on here. Yeah. Which is what we're, I think we'd like. Yeah, that feels good. Okay. So, here, I'll lift up and you can slide that under. Squeeze out? Yes, definitely. Wow. Yeah, all the way to the heel, actually. Yay. Good. Yeah. And that's it for now. And here you can see it glued up pretty nicely. There was some just real minor chipping of the finish right where the separation occurred so I've scraped that smooth and uh, before I put clear lacquer on it I'll airbrush a little bit of tobacco brown and make that line less visible. Here's a better look at the glue that we got inside. You can see the the kerfing split where the back separated from the side, but got a lot of good glue in there. And there's some lower down. Whoops, sorry. So plenty of glue to hold that back in place for a long, long time. Just finishing up looking around inside of this guitar. The X-Brace is right here. You um, can see the, the seam where the brace is glued to the soundboard and I've gone all around and it looks totally intact. That's hide glue. Um, Something that I don't see in too many guitars, um, really just the L7s, um, in addition to the normal or regular X brace, there's also a brace that cuts across horizontally uh, relative to the top grain. Um, 
I think it's right about here, maybe like an inch and a half beyond the the F holes. So like oops, like maybe right here. That's what this brace is. And again, that looks totally intact. And also, if you go up to the top end of the X pattern, uh, let me see if I can get to it. This brace goes the whole width of the upper bout from one edge to the other. Which is, uh, like I said, kind of unique to L7s. I'm sure there have been others that did it, but I've really only worked on L7s where I've seen it. Uh, what you're seeing here is a crack that runs right next to the fretboard uh, that has been glued up in the past. I know the owner said that there was some work done on this guitar in about 30 years ago and that's probably some of the work that was done was to glue that crack. So it's intact. No need to do anything about it. You can see it goes right from the head block to about almost to the waist of the guitar. Um, so that's it for the inside. As I said, all of the the braces look to be nicely still glued to the top. Nothing rattling around. So I can just proceed with touching up the the finish where where we repaired. The, the gap. I don't know how well it came across on that little scope monitor. This is a drawing I made from the first L7 I worked on. It was a, a 1938 and I was just startled to see the bracing because all I knew at the time was either you had an X brace or you had parallel braces and that was about it on a soundboard for an arch top. So what the L7 has is an X brace and then it has this upper transverse brace that runs from one edge to the other of the upper bout and then between the legs of the X brace a few inches below or a few inches above the tail block there's this cross piece makes for a very strong bracing pattern on a soundboard and I know when I built the first guitar like this I really didn't expect great things because I figured the top was just going to be too stiff but it really rings out it's it's got a great acoustic sound um, I use this pattern on a lot of my guitars now not always but uh, certainly if, if I'm asked to do an L7 style, this is what I use. But anyway, that's, that's what's going on here. It's an X with two cross pieces. Very interesting.